there are many ways we can actually measure concentration, but the most popular one and the one that's definitely used heavily in this chapter is units of molarity. Yeah, and what is molarity? Good, moles of solute over liters of solution. Now, we might also use molality, which is just slightly different. It's moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. So, and technically it is taught in this chapter, but I'm gonna leave that one alone. We will definitely lose, use that towards uh, exam four. So a little bit more, but for now, molarity is the most important. Moles of solute over liters of solution. I'm gonna write that as an equation here. Molarity equals moles over the volume in liters. So this is an algebra equation. There are three variables here. If I want you to solve for one, what do I have to provide you with? The other two, sweet. So in this case, if I gave you moles and liters, you could solve for molarity. But what if I wanted to solve for moles? What would moles be equal to? Good, molarity times liters. So, and if I want to rearrange this yet again and solve for the volume in liters, what would that equal? Uh, moles over molarity. So in this case, you've got three variables. If I give you two, you should be able to solve for the third one. So what's really important here is this guy right here, because what else do you also know how to convert moles to? Atoms or molecules, what else? If you have a periodic table handy, you can convert moles to grams, mass as well. So this is really important because here's, you know, we, we have a phrase, all roads lead to Moleville. You can convert moles to anything or anything to moles is usually the way we kind of look at it. Here's another way. Now, if you have molarity and volume, you can get the moles. And if you can get the moles, you could convert that to grams or atoms or molecules or something of this sort. All right, so let's have a little fun with this. Question on your handout is what volume of 0 0.15 molar H2SO4 is required to neutralize 0 0.50 liters of 0 0.40 molar NaOH. So first of all, this implies a chemical reaction is going on. Uses the word neutralize in the question, what kind of chemical reaction are we doing? So it's definitely an aqueous reaction. In fact, the whole chapter is dealing primarily with aqueous reactions from here on out. But specifically, what have I mixed together here? Acid and a base. And they call it neutral. They say neutralize in the question. I say they. I wrote the question. I say neutralize in the question. So it's an acid-base neutralization, which we just dealt with. And when you do an acid-base neutralization, what are typically you're going to form as products? Water and some sort of ionic compound or a salt, we might say. And so first thing we should do is let's get a balanced equation here. So in this case, we're going to do a double displacement reaction. What are my products? H2OH-NaSO4. So let's do the NaSO4 first. Now, it's not NaSO4, though. Na and SO4 do end up together, but what should be the proper ratio of Na to SO4 based on their charges? Cool. Not a problem. What's sodium's charge? Sodium SO4 is two negative. Good. So should be a positive two. Well, sodium's actually only plus one. So what should be the pr if sodium's plus one and sulfite's minus two? Na2SO4. Uh, that's what I want to hear. Na2SO4. Great. And then what's my other product? Well, who? Which two things get together first of all? H and OH, what's H's charge? H3. It's an ion plus one and OH. No, again, one at a time, though, plus one. We always look at it one at a time. And then OH, negative one. So if H is plus one and OH is minus one, what ratio do they mix in? One to one. And what's H and OH mixed in a one to one ratio? H2. H2O, which again, I'm going to write as HOH, which, yes, I know, again, is water. Cool, but that's going to help me balance. The H comes from the acid. The OH comes from the base. So help me balance this. Where do you want to start? Good. Two sodiums on this side. So to get two on this side, I need two of these. But it gives me two hydroxides. How do I make sure I get two hydroxides on this side? Coefficient of two in front of water. But that gives me two H's. I've got two H's from the acid. One sulfate, one sulfate. We're good. The big thing I needed here was the mole to mole ratio in which these react. For every one mole of H2SO4, it requires 
two moles of NaOH to react with? That's what I needed to be able to answer this question right here. So in this case, what do I know about the NaOH? I got a molarity of 0.4 and a volume of 0.5 liters. And if I know molarity and liters, what do I really know about it? Good. If I know molarity and liters, I know the number of moles. So first thing you should recognize, anytime you see a molarity and a liters, you know the moles. So in this case, if I know the moles of NaOH, let's just say I told you it was 10. It's not, but let's say I told you it was 10. Based on this 1 to 2 ratio here, 10 moles of NaOH, how many moles of H2SO4 would you need to neutralize it? Five, half as many. And so if we know the moles of H2SO4, which we eventually will, through the moles of NaOH and this 1 to 2 mole to mole ratio, if we know the moles of H2SO4 and the molarity of H2SO4, then what do we really know? Yeah, moles of molarity, which would be the liters, which is what we're trying to solve in this question. So this is the solutions to equiometry that chapter four talks about, all dealing with this kind of stuff. So let's first of all, somebody get me the moles of NaOH here. Good, so in this case, 0 0.40 moles NaOH. I'm gonna work this out in terms of per liter with some dimensional analysis here. So then times 0 0.50 liters. What's that gonna leave me with units of? 0.2 moles of oh, NaOH. NaOH. That gives me moles of NaOH. I don't want moles of NaOH, though. I want to convert that to what? Uh, moles of and what is the ratio, the mole-to-mole -mole ratio here? Good, one over two in this case, awesome. And that'll cancel out the moles of NaOH. And that will get me the moles of H2SO4. So in this case, what was 0.5 times 0.4 again? Uh, 0.2, what's 0.2 divided by 2? Uh, 0.1. So we have 0.1 moles of H2SO4. And finally, we're going to plug that right back in here. We've got 0.1 moles of H2SO4. And how many, what's the molarity, I should say? Divided uh, as 0.15 molar. And that should get us the volume in liters of H2SO4. What is 0.1 over 0.15? Uh, 0.6666 and then Cool. How many sig figs should I round that to? One. No, so no, let's look at the question. How many sig figs are in the two. numbers? All of them have two sig figs. Should we should round to two sig figs? So in this case, 0 0.67 liters of H2SO4. If I was in a bad mood while I was writing your test. So what you guys don't know, Dr. Briggs is from San Diego. Padres not doing as well as they could be. They've spent a ton of money in the off season. So they're not winning as much as they should be. Dr. Briggs could be in a bad mood. So guess what he could do with this answer choice? Put it in, put it in milliliters. So and he'd put 0.67 liters, 0.67 milliliters, 670 milliliters. You know, he could put all these different combinations and again, I put a couple of right answers in there, but only, he'd only put one right answer. So be careful. Look at your units, super important. So by the way, sig figs, still important in lab. It was important on the first exam. It'll be important potentially on the final, maybe on one question. It's not the most important thing now on your exams. It's a multiple choice test. You're probably not gonna be seeing a difference in sig figs for most of the questions, if not all the questions from here on out. Maybe on the final again though. I mean, he totally could put 0.667 and 0.67, but again, he was testing you on sig figs on the first exam. Not such a big deal now. Probably not going to see it that way. Not saying you can't, but probably not. Let's talk about dilutions for just a minute. So let's say that I like Kool-Aid and that I like it a lot. It's not really true, but let's just pretend for a minute. And so I'm like, well, one packet of Kool-Aid and a pitcher of water makes amazing Kool-Aid. Then let's put in 40 packets. And I put in 40 packets of Kool-Aid and a pitcher of water. How's that working for me? Making some pretty nasty Kool-Aid, right? So when I realize that, I take a little taste, I'm like, whoa, but I know how to fix this. I'm a chemist, right? And so I go to my bathtub, plug up the drain, and I pour the Kool-Aid in there, and I just turn on the faucet. And now I have a whole bathtub full of Kool-Aid. My question for you is this. How many packets of Kool-Aid ended up in my pitcher of water? 40. How many ended up in my bathtub? 40. The Kool-Aid is the solute, the water was the solvent, 
the moles of solute I start with when I do a dilution is equal to the moles of solute I end up with. So the initial moles of solute and the final moles of solute are the same. If you recall though, another way in solution terms of writing the moles of something is to say molarity times volume. So another way of saying that the initial number of moles of solute equals the final number of moles of solute is just to say M1V1 equals M2V2. Or, this actually doesn't have to even be in terms of molarity. You can use any concentration units you want as long as you use the same ones on both sides. C1V1 equals C2V2. Your volumes here also, they don't have to be in liters. As long as you use the same units on both sides, they'll cancel anyways. You can use milliliters. So you can use microliters. You can use anything you want to as long as you use the same units on both sides. So but this is the key of dilutions. So let's say I've got, uh, let's say I've got 10 molar hydrochloric acid. And I want to end up with 250 milliliters of 2 molar hydrochloric acid. And I want to know how to make it. So again, I've got some stock 10 molar hydrochloric acid, and I got a big fat giant container of it. But I want to make 250 milliliters of 2 molar hydrochloric acid. How do I do it? Well, if we look, with M1V1 equals M2V2, how many variables are in that equation? Four. If I want you to solve for one, what do I have to give you? The other three. Which ones have I given you? M1. Given you M1. Check. Initial molarity. Good. Both M2 and V2, the final molarity and the final volume. So what do you have enough info to, start, to solve for? V1. Great. So here's what I want to know. How much of this, well, I want to know how to prepare this. Part of that involves how much of this initial 10 molar HCl stock do I need to use? That's V1. So in this case, if we plug some numbers in here, so 10 molar times V1 equals 2 molar times V2, which I'm just going to leave in milliliters because I can. Yeah, as long as I use the same units on both sides, they'll cancel. If I use milliliters for volume here, I'll get an answer in milliliters here for the other volume. What does this come out to? Good. So my real question was, how do I make this solution? Well, what's the first thing I'm going to pour in? I'm going to pour in 50 milliliters of 10 molar HCl. And then what am I going to pour in? Well, I want to end up with a total of 250 milliliters of 2 molar HCl. So what am I going to put in from here? I'm going to add approximately 200 milliliters of water. And technically, the way we'd really do this in an analytical lab is I would definitely not use a beaker. I would use like a volumetric flask for a specific volume of 250 milliliters. I'd add the HCl, and then I would fill it up to the fill line on the narrow neck of that volumetric flask. But in Gen Chem, we would just say, yeah, add 200 milliliters of water. that will make a total of 250. You're good to go. So one thing to note, when I ask a question like this, providing this sort of info, I can ask, you know, I asked how do we make this. I could ask. How much HCl 10 molar stock do I use? That's what V1 solve for. But I could also ask, how much water do I need to add? Does V1 tell me how much water? Does V2 tell me how much water? No. This is the amount of the original stock. This is the total final volume. It's the difference between the two, 50 versus 250 in this case, that tells me how much water or how much solvent, whatever the solvent might be, I need to add, typically water.